Apple, so, so you guys we are casting remake, on uh... me. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, so it looks like we have to remake the draft because it doesn't look like this is tournament. Uh, we'll see if they actually make a new lobby or not. But for now, they're still doing the the draft and everything on that yeah. side. Yeah, they're asking if they uh, they want to make a new lobby. By the way, they're doing picks and bans, guys. Yep, I can see. So we've got... Oh, that first pick, Malzahar. All right, I like to see that. And that's coming from the boosted gorilla monkeys. By the way, the game is the boosted gorilla monkeys versus the Spanish torpedoes. We are in champ select currently. Are we in champ select? I'm I'm still at the main screen. They they do it on a different um, program, just because. Otherwise, not everybody can trade with each other because not everybody owns every champion. Okay. Um, if you have the stream open, you can actually splash it. Okay, yeah, I'm seeing it right now. So we've got <clears throat> Malzahar on the side of the Boosted Gorilla Monkeys, and then the Torpedoes pick up Draven and Leona. That's a strong bot lane. Well, I guess we're switching. Looks like we're, yeah, going to be switching lobbies here. We get the MF pickup from uh, Boosted Gorilla Monkeys, which is actually a strong pick, a power pick uh, for their ADC. I was looking at their uh, OP.GG, and the strongest ADC that he has is Misfortune, so it's uh, weird that they just give it to him. Which, I mean, Misfortune is definitely not a bad option. It's not. I don't always think it's the best until Leona, but I mean, with a Thresh hopefully there to flare her away, that... It can be pretty good, especially lethality. MF is still insanely good. Yeah, and, and it looks like so far they they got a pick comp and a stop comp. With uh, Malzahar coming in, we'll be able to stop the initial engage from whoever comes in first. So um, they have a lot of peel and a lot of pushback. Whereas it looks like the uh, the torpedoes are looking for more of a straight engage, uh, go 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 kind of team. Trying to see if they're going to pull, pull up a champion that might be able to help with the appeal, or are they going to go full on engaged uh, cop this time? Let me make a post real quick. Keep talking. I'm making a post. Okay. So um, we got a Fiora. Uh, we're still waiting on the final pick. We have the Kane ban and Cannon ban. Kane's a really good ban against the uh, Boosted Gorilla Monkeys. He's been playing a lot of that Kane and seeing some success with it. Not a whole lot, but it is one of his comfort champions going to push him on something that he's not too comfortable with. Um, we also have a Lulu coming out for the Torpedoes. Now I was looking at the Lulu uh, mid-pick that uh, they've been doing, um, and it's worked out for the past, I think, two games that he's played it. Uh, they've seen some success with it. It helps them engage really hard, and it also helps keep whoever's in the front or gets Malzar ulted going to be uh, keeping them healthy while providing some crowd control as well. We have a Shen and a Lee Sin coming in uh, for the boosted Gorilla Monkeys. It gives them some kind of initiation and keeps shields on them to keep them healthy. Uh, the Lee Sin pick, it's it's kind of iffy, uh, especially when you get picked into a Lulu. That Polymorph is really strong, and if Leona, it's going to be really just a situational pick. If Lee Sin gets a nice insect, especially on a key component, like key player, they'll be able to burst them down. Um, it's going to be hard, of course, with the Lulu ulti being able to help them out. With the least pick as well, it's going to be a lot harder for Lee Sin to be able to get uh, into the fight and get out. So it's going to be a lot of pressure on him. If anything, they're going to be looking more for the peel side of things. And then whenever the team fight goes their way, they'll probably engage more. Uh, the torpedoes look like they're just going full on engage uh, and pick comp, um, as well as keeping them safe with that Lulu pick. Uh, Lulu uh, mid, that would be. Uh, so it'll be lots of damage and shields coming out, especially with the new masteries coming out. Um, the airy, I believe, providing the shield if it goes onto an ally. So definitely going to be something to look out for. Um, it's going to be a full engage comp versus a peel engage comp as well. 
And uh, they can definitely look for picks as well with the Thresh coming out and the Malzahar ulti. So it looks like it's just going to be whoever gets the team fight that they want is going to be coming out on top. Uh, looking at the games prior, it looks like I believe the Torpedoes are finding a lot of success uh, with their comp, with who they're playing and how they're getting um, used to each other, especially as a team. They have a lot of wins under the belt uh, playing as a pre-made. Uh, so it looks like they're finding their comfort spot. And uh, as you can tell, we're, we're finally into the game. The actual picks and bans are coming out, as you saw prior. So it's going to be a real quick uh, pick ban phase. So it's definitely going to be uh, very interesting to see the Torpedoes using that synergy that they found for a full engage comp, which is high risk, high reward, depending on how they play it. The Lulu is definitely going to keep them safe, but uh, it's going to be uh, definitely a game to see. The Booster Grilling Monkey is still trying to find their footing as a team um but again this is just one of the first games that they'll be playing so it it from the past games that they've played so far it looks like the torpedoes are going to be having the advantage just from pure team synergy but we'll be able to see what the boosted gorilla monkeys uh have to come to offer especially with this game to see how they synergize with one another see if uh, everything kind of comes together during this game uh everybody has their bad game so it's really hard to to say a team doesn't mesh especially whenever it's you know, preseason, people are still trying to learn their the new runes, the new mat, or yeah, basically just the new runes. See how things uh work for the champions. The meta has definitely changed a lot too, so it's gonna be very interesting to see. Uh, the torpedoes have barely any tanks. It's gonna be a lot of squish, especially with the Fiora and Elise. There is no frontline tank, whereas they have a Shen and Lee Sin on the front line for the boosted gorilla monkey. So they are gonna have that beat that they need to survive. Uh, engages, but again, it really just depends on if Lee Sin builds tank or if he's going to go uh, damage item first, uh, if he gets ahead, if he doesn't get ahead. So it's going to be a very interesting game to see. It's going to rely a lot, a lot on early game uh, for uh, both themes um, because they can either snowball in one direction or it's going to be a very fairly even uh, game. Again, with the Lulu and the Lee Sin, I mean, the Lulu's going to be able to polymorph for Lee Sin if he's trying to get the insect off, so he does have to be careful and just watch for those summoners. Um, and, I mean, you got to think, so you I mean, you said that the the torpedoes don't necessarily have a tank. I mean, they do have Leona, and Lulu can make anybody into a tank, even on AD carry. And with it being Draven, just giving him the move speed to get in there, and then having, you know, the wild growth to keep somebody alive, that is usually even enough, especially to stop, like, you know, a Malzahar one-shotting someone. A Lulu shield and a, uh, a Wild Growth is definitely going to keep, should keep them alive, but we'll see if they, if the uh, boosted Gorilla Monkeys can actually just keep them safe. You know, I mean, they got a Shen ult, they got the Taunt and everything, they got Thresh to try and keep them away with Lantern and everything, so it's kind of a kite-back comp versus a let's, you know, ram it down your throat kind of thing. But we'll see if the Dra Draven usually has a pretty good start. Um, MF's just going to be looking to poke with the Qs in the bot lane, and if Alistair Moody can keep the Leona off of them with that Thresh, then they should be all safe in the bot lane. It's realis Realistically, it's going to be up to the junglers to try and get a lane snowballing. I don't think you're gonna be, they're going to be looking mid at all, seeing as it's a Lulu and a Malzahar, and until 6... I don't think you're really going to have kill pressure. Even then, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of kill pressure either way because Lulu shields and everything. But, you know, once six, Shen can get an ulti bot lane, Lee Sin gank, and you all of a sudden have four people in the bot lane. So that can completely flip things around. Yeah, it definitely can. And it, it really just comes down to, to the way they play their comp out. Um, like I said, like it can go either way it really depends on their early game for both teams especially um draven does have massive damage but if draven gets shut down then it's going to be relying on the heal for draven make him strong for the lulu and the leona um the big thing that i do like even though they don't have tanks except for the leona is like you said they have the lulu ultimate that makes pretty much anybody super healthy and a semi tank with just pure health uh, which provides crowd control as well as whoever's on them. Um, but they also have the Fiora and Elise, which can be huge damage dealers. So they don't have one threat. They have one huge threat and two other threats uh, as well. So it's not going to be just 
peeling one person, it's going to be a full-on disengage if they do get engaged on. They're going to have to be looking out for that, uh, especially with the move speed that Lulu provides, um, like you were talking about for the Draven. Mm. Um, and depending on what Leona builds, I mean, it, it really it really can go either way. It's going to be a game to watch. Um, whoever hits six first, it definitely goes into the boosted Gorilla Monkeys if they can make a play with that Shen ult. Um, but it's just really all up in the air. We'll see how they mesh, how the games go. Uh, see if they find their footing. Um, according, just based off the last games that they played, Boosted Gorilla Monkeys have a little bit more to come up with um, as a team. Um, and the Torpedoes seem to have found a good footing in chemistry within each other. So it's definitely going to be a game to watch. Um, I don't think it's going to be... If it's short, it's going to be super one-sided. But if not, it's going to be a really good game. Yeah. You also got to take one of the keys I think is going to be top lane and you, you're going to be, we're going to be looking especially late game as far as split pushing goes. Shen technically can win this matchup early. He can out damage the Fiora early if he plays it right. Now it's the kind of thing where you get one bad, you know, missed taunt kind of thing or Fiora stuns you up and is able to just get a couple extra auto attacks in on you. That can be the difference, but I would think Shen actually can win this matchup early. Now, late game, I don't know. Fiora is a nasty, nasty champion. So um, I feel like that they're going to be looking more for that Fiora split push because, you know, even if Shen, you know, teleports out to go, you know, save a team fight, Fiora keeps split pushing is going to take, you know, multiple towers with ease. But as we're going into game here, let's just talk about our lineup. So on the side of the Boosted Gorilla Monkeys, we have Jimmy H1Y1K on Shen in the top lane, Fish Baby Bot as Lee Sin in the jungle. We've got Gurge 7 on Malzahar in the mid lane. Piper is on Misfortune <laughs> as A.E. Gary and Alistair Moody as Thresh as support. And on the red side for the Torchpedos, we have uh, Debrosius on the Fiora, a very comfort pick that he has. Uh, Clumsy Chocobo on Elise. Uh, Rob on the Lulu, his newfound Lulu, waiting to see what he can uh, bring to the table with that. We have Digital Love 69 on the Draven, another comfort pick for him. And we have the Will Brooks on Leona, which is another comfort pick for him too as well. So uh, it's uh, definitely going to be a battle. I'm waiting to see what's going to go down. Uh, it, I I feel like it relies a lot on the early game. If it's safe early game, it's going to be a battle mid late game. So I'm yeah. really really mad at Rob because the Lulu mid pick was my signature pick. Come season <laughs> come season one of the PMA LCS, he's just trying to ride the hype train. <laughs> the hype train, hype train's are real, man. Hype train's are real. You know stealing. You know, is just a form of flattery, right? Not exactly. even Star Guardian. <laughs> Not even Star Guardian. Pool party Lulu is the best, man. Who doesn't like little octopus floating around? Hashtag right? Dylan is actually tilted by the torpedoes. Let's see these uh, masteries that we have. Uh, very standard mastery is going out for both uh, teams. Uh, from what I've seen, I haven't really dabbled much into it, but it just seems like. As a very standard flow for everybody's uh, masteries when it comes to uh, specific champions, and it's it's weird to see, uh, especially with these uh, champions being chosen as the meta for now, uh, being played a lot in every role, like the Fiora and uh, the more of the tanky uh, bot lanes due to the masteries. Um, so with the new meta coming out, it's definitely going to be hypey to see what they have to offer. Uh, we have Boosted Grill Monkeys making a play right now, looking for an early invade, but it looks like the Torpedoes have the same idea, going to be in their jungle as well. Um, are they going to be able to find each other? A bold move, Cotton. <laughs> Let's see if it pays off. So it looks like the Grill Monkeys right. are just going to go ahead and walk back into their jungle. They need to be careful and stick together. They do have five men against the four-man squad of the Torpedoes, so it's going to really rely no on... No on either side, though. So no, oh, either team is going to see And we have a Shen going back. Until now. See the fight is going down. They're going to get rid of Malzahar. Uh, passes. Malzahar is going to go ahead and flash that. Trying to keep himself safe. MF is going to flash as well. The Draven damage early just, just decimated their team. Uh, the Leona passive as well just completely decimated the Malzahar. Uh, they definitely played that well. Getting rid of the Malzahar passive before setting him up. So they can keep that. 
And um, they get the ward kill. Very nice. <laughs> zombie ward, definitely OP OP. More importantly, I, I the ward that. kill is on the correct champion for that zombie ward to happen. <laughs> and they steal the red buff and burn two flashes. Two flashes. We have a and flash and, and teleport. Teleport to mid lane. That's, trying that's... to make sure he gets that experience, but he's got a full. He has no flash right now. We all still have the flash. He needs to be careful. And he's dead. He's just gonna first go blood down. Goes over to Leona, unfortunately, but but hey, you know. Yeah, first blood, first needs blood. Kills too. Can't buy that side stone with no money, right? Oh. Top lane, pretty much. back and forth in the top lane, pretty even. I mean, it's pretty much well lane. expected with the 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 level one that Fiora has. How strong it is versus Shen. Now, if you want to talk about the Shen versus Fiora matchup, this is one of my favorite matchups because Shen is legitimately the champion that should be winning this matchup. Shen beats Fiora in every way, shape, or form if you are on top of how to, how to have your Shen mechanics, using the blade pass through, utilizing your W. Ugh. Yeah, and yet it's, yes, it, it's a lot of micromanaging when it comes to that because he also has to be aware of the, the vital points that Fiora has on top of him, so... It does become micromanaging. I do agree that Shen should win the matchup, but it's, it's a lot of micromanaging. Well, I am a Diamond Shen main, so yes. <laughs> I do so love you, this so matchup, <laughs> and I love beating Fioris in this matchup. We do oh, have any ghosts coming in with lane. Leona. Uh, Flash with already burned. In. Blocks the Lee Sin Q, though, so no engage there from Lee Sin, and he's going to get out. Just that's, burning a flash, though. That's actually interesting. I never knew that Fiora can W a Lee Sin Q, and it disappears. I don't think it. See, I don't think it actually connected because it would still. It should still be it there. Just it wouldn't deal him. damage. Yeah, that's that was that was my initial thought. Okay, as long as I'm not going crazy. This new I'll take a look me back at it, but I I think it blocked. It just blocks it. I don't think it actually hits. Okay, and we also have a uh, flash coming out from Draven uh, and Heal. They have a top lane skirmish right now. This is even trade. They're both pretty low, about quarter health each. Do know that Draven does not have flash, uh, have any sums actually right now. Thresh, uh, Alstar Moody coming out with the big Thresh plays, landing two vital hooks, getting rid of both of those summoners from Draven. Uh, definitely going to keep him back into the lane despite the early game uh, disadvantage that they got with those uh, burning those flashes early. So I just want to confirm that the Fiora. Perry does did block the Lee Sin Q. It didn't miss. It actually hit, That's but the Perry blocked it. Interesting. Interesting. It's good to know. I love playing Lee Sin, and now I know not to do that whenever she pairs. Overall, we're seeing. Looks like in the top lane, fiora has got a little bit more farm, but he does have a wave here as well. And Lu definitely losing that trade in the mid lane, needs to be careful. We do have an engage going onto the Leona bot lane, Draven is going to drop his axe, not going to be able to pull out the damage that he needs to uh, effectively trade uh, with that bot lane. Uh, red side is just going to have to be pushed up, they, they don't have much to uh, really fight, they have a very healthy Thresh. Uh, don't believe they're both potting up right now. Don't think Leona has any more. Yeah, and uh, currently the Draven it has half of the. So CS we do have an engage going on bot lane. Leo, uh, at least it's going to flash and Mr. Cocoon. But we do have Leona. Is she going to go down? She's not going to go down. They do have Scorch on her, but she is not. She is going to live from that engage. Uh, very vital Cocoon missing. Very vital Cocoon missing. They could definitely turn that around in that bot lane. Um, Lisa is definitely overstaying. This is another cocoon. Does take a lot of damage from the MF. Yeah, MF with the airy, Ari, airy, whatever it's called. Definitely doing a lot of damage, you know. Definitely is, definitely is. Fiora not respecting the Shen is starting to lose the matchup. Shen needs to be careful of those vitals. Fiora is taking advantage. Not going to be able to get much off of it. Shen does stay alive. I believe he has, yeah, he has Doran Shield, so he'll be able to just uh, sit in the bag and kind of just regenerate his health. And 
And we have a little in the bot lane. Piper is just slowly growing his CS lead here. Yeah, we have a 47 to 26 uh, in favor of the MF. It's, it is his comfort pick, and I, I did mention that earlier. Every game that he has an MF, he seems to pop off with it. Um, so definitely a huge comfort pick going towards uh, with the Gorilla Monkeys in this first match with just the MF. We have a, a, a repost or a select coming up from Fiora for uh, no reason in the top lane. Jen's just going to go ahead and farm this out though, doesn't want to make any kind of risky plays. He does not have vision of the jungle, so he doesn't want to make plays and get caught out by the Elise. But this is the point that even a Shen who's not doing well into this matchup will start to turn it around for a little bit. He's sitting on that Bramble Vest to Fiora's two longswords, so he has a definite advantage in that short duel between Yeah, and right now Fiora's running out of mana, so keep queuing, and she's gonna be out, and she's not gonna be able to do anything the next fight. He does have the level advantage going in on right here. It's gonna be Fiora's death. I don't know why you would want to go into a Shen that has the advantage, and he's just gonna let Fiora he's walk not away. Pressing it. He's not pressing he's, the advantage that he's already built. He is very, very concerned of just the unknown. He doesn't have any wards or any uh, any kind of vision in the jungle. He doesn't know where the jungle is. I respect it playing safe, um, but man, he definitely had a huge advantage. The level up on the Fiora and the, the, the Q going into him, missing the vital, which means the Q doesn't get a lower cooldown. It's, it's, he definitely could have won that easily. So we do have an engage coming up bottom. Uh, Leona is going to miss her E. They're going to go ahead and disengage that. Um, gonna have to just watch out uh, for those skill shots because we do have the Cocoon and Leona's E as a huge factor of engagement. Ooh. Oh, we have a huge MFQ. chunk from MFQ. Damage, boys, damage. Draven's gonna have to start re respecting that MF. He does know what he's doing on that champion. We do have ulti coming in for mid. Lulu's gonna be dead, getting the champ taunted as well. We do have a hook coming out from Fresh on the bot lane. They're not going to be able to get much. The Q no. does land on the Draven, but he is not going to go down. They will play in the mid lane. Lulu not having much vision uh, definitely gets uh, dropped for that. And when it comes to not having vision, uh, the best way to really play is to always expect the jungler to be there. Play safe. Now it looks like they're going to start turning on the dragon here. Get the kill in the mid lane, keep them off. Bot lane is super, super And we have a threshold coming out. Elise is going to go out. No, and that's going to go ahead and get a two-man ult. Are they going to both going to go down? Leona does go down. They don't get anything for that. Now respecting the cooldowns and not knowing MF's damage, especially with her not using her ultimate yet. Taking that engage is just not the best thing to do. Looks like they're just trying to find any way that they can to get back into this game. Fiora is starting to lose these trades to Shen. Shen needs to realize that he has the upper advantage. With that Bramble Vest that was uh, talked about earlier, uh, Fiora doesn't have the... Well, she has her TMI now. She's not going to be able to do much. There's so looks much like armor on the Baby was trying to pull a play there. It looks, looks like Shen's going to go ahead and pick up this Fiora. Is he going to have splash for it? Minion does minion Fiora. <laughs> Those darn minions. Engaging into a minion wave is always the worst idea because minions will destroy you. Yeah, just not respecting the damage so far on the Shen. And not the paying Shen attention does have to the, the advantage items early. either. Yeah, with the, the reduced healing that he has from hitting that Shen, he's, there's there's no respect going out for the for the items that he has, especially with the damage, the innate damage that he gets from just his Q. Wish the Monkey's definitely taking this early game advantage uh, and kind of walking off with it. And this is what I'm talking about, the, the synergy that they were looking for with all those games that they were playing. Um, it looks like everything's starting to come together right now, but this is still far from Here over. Here comes the ultimate once again. Lulu's not going to be able to go down. That. We got an insect coming out from the least end. But the beautiful is going to go down. He does it now with the Shen ult at the last second. Very beautiful play. Shen with the eyes. Jimmy just coming, like showing up on this Shen. I'm, I am, I am massively impressed. That was 
I am not a Shin main, and I can't speak on any Shin mains, but I have horrible vision when it comes to people dying. And uh, huge kudos to him being able to realize that this, the Lee Sin was going to die to that. The Lee Sin is getting caught out right now. Leona is going to miss her Q. Are they going to be able to pick up that kill? Leona is going to Q. And the Will kill. Brooks picks up another one. He's just popping off. Leona. Leona is the fed one on their team. Oh, but they oh. didn't pop the spell shield first. Yeah, it looks Leona like Leona ult does not hit. Draven was definitely trying to get the Q off before Leona ulted, and they were trying to at the same time, but you have to realize there is a projectile speed. It's not going to be instant whenever Draven throws his axe, uh, whereas the ultimate from Leona is not instant as well, but it's it doesn't take as long to hit his target. This Malzahar right now is just cutting through their team. Yes. With those uh, bullet divisions, man. Especially with the blue buff, uh, he's going to be able to just sustain that lane. It doesn't matter how many people come there, he's going to be able to wave clear uh, effectively and keep himself safe. Yeah, this is what we are talking about. It comes down to the early game, and right now, Lee Sin has been more effective, especially in the mid lane, whereas Elise has not. And so while Elise does have her runic echoes, she's got her whole jungle item built, she's just behind and just doesn't have the damage to help and is... Since she went Runic Echoes, a little too squishy. We do have an engagement on Violent. Violent. We have an exhaust going down, but Elise is going to get caught out by the Lee Sin with the counter gank. Elise is going to go down to the Thresh wall. Lee Sin with or the Elise. eyes making sure that he understood where the jungler was and being able to uh, counter gank effectively. We do have uh, Nazahar ulting the Lulu under turret. He's definitely going to lose that uh, trade, um, although he does get the pressure and possibly don't think he'll get the turret, but having the added pressure definitely helps. Uh, Shen is going to go into... Ooh, we have an insect reason. coming out for this baby bot showing his skills on that Lee Sin with those insect waves. Mazar is going to be okay with that, uh, tr not trade, but being able to get as much damage onto that turret as possible. Rob not giving it up without a fight. That turret should go down here within the next, you wouldn't know, with the next push. But it looks like for now they're both just gonna back, take their bases. Malzahar probably gonna get a decent chunk of damage when he comes back though. Yeah, definitely trying to push this wave out so that he can go in back with a, a bigger gold pool. We'll go yeah, and as we're seeing team. right now in the bot lane, MF doubled the CS of the Draven, 120 to 62. You can see they're pushing that advantage real hard, and MF with that dust blade now. Anytime she lands a Q, even if it's not, you know, she doesn't kill a minion with it, she's gonna destroy the Draven's health bar. She's gonna destroy most of their team's health bar, maybe besides Leona. Yeah, and Draven definitely trying to get him back in with the call, trying to get, um, I guess, money from it. I don't know if he bought that earlier, if that's an item that he just bought on the whim, but it's not gonna do much because he's not gonna be able to farm effectively with it. And we do have two turrets going down on the torpedo side. I'm always very reluctant to to try and get a coal late. I feel like coal is a good item to get if you are ahead and you have that little extra gold to buy that because it helps snowball your lead because if you are able to keep farming up and get that push that advantage and get that extra, the gold that you can get from coal, then it's good, but I feel like when you're behind, it just doesn't give you the stats, and it, it's going to take you too long to actually, you know, get those stacks up there to do, to get that extra gold that coal would provide you. Exactly. So we'll it's it's paying off for him, but... Yeah, it becomes less cost We do have Draven coming, not in good positioning. It's going to flash into the wall, it's nearly going to go down. What is, uh, I guess they're going to be fighting over this uh, Herald. Lee Sin's going to go ahead and ult for Leona for a kill. We Meanwhile, do have... Four for none, and they're going to get the Rift Herald off of it. Just... Trying to fight and take objectives when they thought... When they thought that they had backed, and they had all hadn't backed yet. And it's not only that, it's about positioning. Draven's not in the best position. Uh, in these team fights, he's eaten a lot of Alistar Moody's hooks, and I'm not discrediting Alistar Moody's hooks, but it's they're very they're very telegraphed, and it's just Draven's not really sidestepping these um, 
I don't know if it's the nerves that's doing to him. Maybe he's just having an off night. Um, or maybe just Alphar Moody's right now is uh, playing his heart out on this dress, showing that everybody that he's uh, actually mad life. But I do got to give credit to Alistar Moody. He came in last split and subbed in for a couple games, and he was phenomenal in those games. So I'm excited to see how well he does this season with it. Because, I mean, I'm sure he'll, be, he'll do fantastic, but, I mean, so far, he's 1-0-5. Pretty good score for uh, Thresh support, you know? Definitely. He's, he's definitely showing up this game. His early Thresh hooks that he had in lane is what gave him the huge advantage in the lane, even though they had, uh, despite the flashes that they took early with that invade. Alfred Moody making sure that his team doesn't fall behind. They're very much so in the lead right now. Uh, a lot of the gold going on to the Lee Sin. Uh, Lee Sin is going to opt for damage. He does have a Black Cleaver. He uh, scored Lee Sin. I like it. He has a BS going sword. straight at it. And a Tiamat, so he's going to be farming the jungle like no man, nobody's business. And he's also going to have a damage uh, output as well. I think that, I'm pretty sure that VF Sword is going to go straight into uh, Guardian's Angel. I don't see, uh, unless Rob's getting caught Ooh, out, it's going to go nice and flash. Rob. Rob is definitely the kind of player that uh, assesses the situation before having to use summoners instead of using them on, the, on a whim. So very good on him to realize that he was stuck between a rock and a hard place and having to burn that flash. Uh, definitely going to play a lot more safe as well. When it comes to vision, uh, Red Side is definitely making sure they keep their, their jungle well lit up so they can see for rotations. We do have a mid push coming out for torpedoes. We're going to see a trade, but there's also a Shen pushing up in the bot lane too. So they can keep trying to push mid, but they're going to lose more. They're gonna lose. They're gonna gain off of that. Yeah, it looks like they decided to pop the back on this. Oh, oh yeah, that that's so big from Alpha. <laughs> no, Definitely a lot of overkill for that, but um, getting that at least off the map this is gonna give them this inhibitor. They are gonna be able to go to and rotate to that top lane with the, the minion wave that Shin has pushed up, uh, possibly getting that in his turret as well. We don't have Baron coming up until another min then. Seconds. We do have an insect coming out for Lee Sin. He's going to be making anything out of it. Lulu is going to be able to stay alive and healthy. But if you're going in, nothing's going to really come up from that. We have a shit ultimate going out to the Malzahar. And F is going to be able to pick up the kill. We have a Draven that's just running away with the Malzahar E on him. This it looks like they're just going to go ahead and close out this game. I take that back. They, uh, three members took uh, a lot of damage from the Draven ultimate. A flash out coming That's from. the thing they don't want to do. They don't want to overstay. Oh my god, oh, MF! Is, is, is getting demolished. That's what happens with full lethality MF. All it takes is one shot, and then Mal's a hard malefic vision, and she's dead. I mean, you can see at this point, there there is just no tanky stats on their team. And that's that's what I was preaching about earlier. Just if if they don't have the tank stats and they're going to be going full damage, they need to have that early game advantage. Because if not, it's going to be where they are right now, where they're really just trying to find anything that they can find to get back into the game. Uh, Torpedo or uh, Boosted Grill Monkey is not giving them anything to come back on. They're definitely playing safe, but they're also playing smart, which is great because it's not only giving them a lead, but it's maintaining that lead as well. And it looks like we're we may end up having, you know, uh, you know, the Baron showdown once again. That's what typically happens here, but the Gorilla Monkeys definitely have the advantage seeing as bot lane inhib is down, so they can pressure it, just let the lane push, and try and go from there. Yeah, they're starting it up right now, and Draven's still in the, the bot lane, clearing out minions. He is not there, but they're going to back off of it. They don't have the Lee Sin and they didn't want to risk it since the Lee was nearby. So they're going to go ahead and start it now that Lee Sin does have, is there. They're going to be able to burn it down with that amount of damage. Not yeah. seen by that pink. The pink is a little too out of range for that. Like, see, it's, it's going like to be battles with might. At least getting ready for that repel. Is she going to be able to make it in time? And MF secures the Baron and is going to pick up two kills there. That was free for nothing. They're going to get pinned. Oh my goodness! Oh, that was 
And then we got the Malzahar TP into the base, and he's just gonna take all that last Nexus Tower, and this last push should be the game. Definitely huge GG coming out for uh, Boosted Gorilla Monkeys. Uh, like I said, I was hoping they were gonna find their footing in this game, especially with the comp that they had versus the comp they were going against. Um, definitely played it to their advantage. A lot more roams coming out uh, from Boosted Gorilla Monkeys in the early game, which definitely uh, helped secure their early lead despite their early uh, flashes that they burned and the first blood that Malzahar gave up. It looks like Gorilla Monkeys came to play and they're, they're not gonna give up. It looks like they're gonna be playing their hearts out. Despite the games that they were losing together in the normal, it's not stopping their performance right now. That is gonna be the game over to the Boosted Gorilla Monkeys. GG. Very well played game by them. Very well played. The insect, uh, the insects coming out from the Lee also very clean, uh, for the most part, uh, being able to secure a lot of those early kills as well. Again, like you were talking about, the, the six that you get from Shen allows them so much more freedom to make those plays and turn an easy 3v3 to a 4v3. Um, them realizing that uh, definitely push their advantage in that bot lane. Um, a huge shout out to Alistar Moody, making sure that his ADC was able to stay alive and stay uh, get get the advantage that he needed because he knew that Piper would be able to pop off on the MF if given the chance. So he definitely played to the strengths uh, to his lane partner. They definitely have a lot of synergy going on. Um, when it comes to uh, Torpedo's bot lane, they're going to have to find more synergy um, and just really engage at the same time. Um, Gonna have to watch out for those Leona E's. A lot of missed E's coming out uh, early game, which definitely could have turned the tide, especially when Elise was ganking. Um, overall, definitely well, a very well played game by both teams. Um, it just feels like uh, Torpedoes lost their footing early and just weren't able to recover from that. And Gorillas really just took advantage of that from uh, then on out. Definitely a good game. Definitely a good game. Well, what do you think was one of the big turning points for this game? What, in your opinion, what play turned this around for them? I don't think it was necessarily one play. I think it was that the torpedoes didn't play the early game like it needed to be played, and yes, they got the first blood, or they got the you know they got the first blood. They blew the flashes and everything, but. I think it was mostly that they just didn't play the early game like it needed to be. They didn't have as much pressure as they needed to, and realistically, it was just, it was Lee Sin go going mid, getting a couple kills in there, putting pressure up. The bot lane handled itself down there. You, yes, the Lee Sin came bot, and they got a couple kills that way as well. And Shen, you know, was there to save the day. But it was that there was just so much pressure put on by. Uh, the Booze Girl Monkeys bot lane that they didn't need any help realistically. They were stopping them from all that pressure. And then that was the I mean that was the win condition there for the torpedoes is that they were just gonna get that early pressure on their team and just keep going with it. But they couldn't get that early foothold and BGM's uh, comp came online they were, you know, they were never going to die because they always had a Shen ulti there, and then they were able to just keep going with their late game, later game comp that they needed. Yeah, there's there's definitely a lot of key points. I agree that that uh, it didn't come down to one play. It was just how they played together as a team the entire time. Um, we can go on and on and on about Boosted Grill Monkeys and how much they've uh, played through that, uh, but I still want to give uh, props to the Torpedoes um, having a, a gold deficit can really bring a team's morale down, and they kept fighting until they kind of realized that it was kind of a losing fight. But they took every fight that they could to see if they'd be able to turn the tides. Unfortunately, they weren't unable to do so, but having that, that never-give-up uh, ideal can always turn a game, always turn a game. Uh, but you definitely need a lot of team synergy as well so that you can turn the game around. can't do this by yourself. This is definitely a team game. 
Um, and both teams are looking to uh, win. So definitely excited to see what's going to come out of the second one. I do see, I, I'm going to predict that the MF is going to be banned out. Like I said, it is um, one of Pyrus's uh, comfortable champs that he's on. But that, whenever I saw those games from, especially from OP.GG, if I was on the enemy team, that would be the first ban. I'm not going to give anybody a comfort pick that they go 22 and like 3. You got to be kidding me. It's a very it's a very strong champ now, you know. I mean, <laughs> lethality MF has always been good, but newer things started coming out. But you know, with you know new runes and masteries and whatnot, it there's so many things that are so strong right now. It's just a matter of you know finding the right thing for your matchup. And if you can get you know your strong thing put into a good matchup, then you're you're good to go. It doesn't really matter. Like Ezreal, super strong right now. But still can get run over if he, you know, he's in a bad matchup. Mm, Paul, who is the new uh, game one player MVP? Um, let's see. Uh, man, if I had to cast my vote on this, I I would have to give it to Alistar Moody. I again, this is my first time seeing anybody play, and. Seeing him being able to not only win a bot lane that should be either going even or in the favor of Draven Leona, to be able to make it to where it's going in their favor consistently with those hooks, those hooks definitely turn that, that bot lane around, which definitely helped that snowball um, quite a bit. I, I'd have to get to Alistar Moody. Um, I mean, it, the, the Piper is amazing on MF, but... I, let's let's be honest. Without All Star Moody there, what what is Piper? I mean, he just he just shoots bullets, right? <laughs> so, I I I had to give it to All Star Moody. It, it's support to me. Support to me. I'm kind of divided on it. I All Star Moody's player was great, and but I think he would be my number two pick. I just think Fish Baby Bot's pressure, especially just coming mid lane, getting that getting everything rolling. He was able to help, you know, Rome bot lane get kills as well. He was always in the right place at the right time. You gotta give it to Fish Baby Bot. Yeah, my my second close would have to be the Shen. Although he was playing kind of scared in that top lane, once he started getting comfortable and realizing he was winning trades without actually having <laughs> to do much besides stand there and get hit, he really took that to the next level and just... Hashtag <laughs> Fire Piper. Get it going. I like it. We got Piper, got Fire Piper. Oh my goodness. All right, my guys. Goodness. Well, we're going to have to end up taking a short break here while we switch over streamers. I have to end up going. So I guess we will catch everyone back when we begin game two. All right. All right we'll see you guys in a minute.